Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. It's time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. It's Monday morning. It is time for us to bless the Lord. Time for us to magnify his name. For he is great. He is greatly to be praised. Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come in the room. Come on. Come on in the room. Greet me as you come in. Greet one another as you come into the room. Let me know that you are here to bless the Lord, to participate in what the Lord is. Yes, what he is doing this morning, for he is doing something great and marvelous and powerful in the morning, in this morning, in all of our lives. For he's given us brand new mercies to us each and every day. And with that, I just want to give God some praise. I want to thank him and magnify him. Good morning to you, Sister Emma. Thank you. Thank you for greeting me this morning. Thank you for letting me know that the Lord is here. He is here in your rooms. The anointing is here. Yes, the power of God, it is here. It is here moving and abounding among each and every one of you. Good morning to you, Sister Nancy. Sister Marcella, good morning to you. God bless you. Sister Terry, good morning. God bless you. God bless all of you. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. And we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. We just bless God. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we just greet you with the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, you are just wonderful. Lord, there's nobody like you nowhere in all the earth. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for blessing us over and over again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for doing it again. For whatever it is, God, that we need, we thank you, Lord, for doing it again for us, for magnifying God in our lives, God, where we were weak. For showing yourself, Lord God, so strong for us, God. We thank you, Lord, for pulling us up, God, out of the muck and the miry clay. We thank us, thank you, Lord God, for continuing to show us how powerful and mighty you are, God. In spite of all of our imperfections, in spite of our flaws, Lord God, you continued to shower your, your magnificent blessings upon us, O oh God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that when we were sick, Lord, you healed us, God. You thank we thank you, Lord God, for your word is true. God, the Bible says that you're not a man that you should lie or the son of man you should have to repent. Every promise that you gave us, Lord God, we believe it. We believe it, Lord God, and we thank you for the faith that you've given to us. And even, God, if we have just a faith that's the side of us, a mustard seed, as the word of the Lord says, Lord, we are able, God, to speak a thing. We're able to move mountains. As a matter of fact, God, we're able to do the impossible with you. And so we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, God, the confidence, allowing us the courage, God, to speak a thing, Lord God, and let it come to pass. Lord, we ask that you would take this word, Lord God, and not let it fall on deaf ears. But Lord, allow this word to fall on good ground, that it will be cultivated and nurtured, Lord God, and that this word will touch the minds and the hearts of men and women everywhere. And they will know, God, just how good you are. We thank you, Lord God, you've rebuked the devourer everywhere, Lord God, that he shall not eat the fruit, fruit of our ground, Lord God, that our labor will not be in vain, and I know it will not be. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do in the next few minutes of time. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And bless the Lord. Ah, before I leave this prayer, I just want to say a special prayer right now for Dr. Evelyn. We thank you, Lord God, for her, for her life, O oh Lord God. We pray, Lord God, you continue to touch her, Lord God, and God, raise her up, O oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that she is a child of the Most High God. She is your daughter, Lord God, and we know that you care about her. So every concern, Lord God, every physical concern, Lord God, every spiritual concern, every uh, natural concern that she has, Lord God, we know that you are working it out right now for her good. You are taking care of her, Lord God. Raise her up right now in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever it is. Bring her body, Lord God, back into divine order according to your word, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that she shall, God, rest in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Listen, this morning, um, as I was preparing, um, even in, in last night, as the Lord was um, speaking to me, um, I was saying, talking to the Lord about what it is the people wanted to hear. Good morning to you, um, Sister Mary. What is it the people needed to hear? And yesterday, the Lord allowed me to speak a word. And the word that I spoke on yesterday, if you didn't um, catch it in yesterday, go back and get it. But the word was about you were supposed to be blessed. And the, word, the Lord was speaking to me in regard to the commanded blessing that he had put on the people of God, where it talked about in Deuteronomy 28 and verse number eight, where the Lord spoke that I have commanded a blessing on you. I have put a blessing on you. And because if there is a commanded blessing that has been placed on your life, that's a blessing that I 
no one can take off of you, that you are supposed to be blessed. But so many times we walk around not being blessed. And so I was speaking to the Lord and I said, Lord, the people need to understand that they are blessed. They are blessed. And so we don't want to talk about doom and gloom. We only want to talk about being blessed. We want to talk about what a blessing it is to be blessed and, and how because of our blessing, because of how blessed we are, because of our fruitfulness, we are continuing to be blessed. We're blessed, the Bible says, in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we go in, blessed when we go out. We are blessed. And so we have to then be the billboards for the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be the billboard for God. We have to be the billboard for the disciples. We have to be the billboard, Sister Marilyn, for Christianity as we walk around being the blessed people that God are, so that uh, and that we are. And so we talk about this morning, the blessing of being fruitful because every last one of us, each of us, listen, we are, we are blessed. And the Bible says we are blessed to be fruitful. What does that mean? Well, I looked at the word fruitful, look at fruitfulness. It means that we are producing good results. We are being beneficial, not just for ourselves, but for our families, for those around us. We are being profitable. We are making a profit. Listen, we're not just expending ourselves and then we're being wasted. We're being expensed out, but we're being profitable. We are being profitable. We are abounding in fruit, in the things, come on, that grow up outside of us and out of us. We are abounding. We are in our trees, come on, are overflowing with fruit as those that are dropping onto the ground as trees and plants. Um, being fruitful means that we, uh, we are bearing fruit abundantly. You know, sometimes even in this coronavirus environment, I know that there are many of us that are probably sitting at home and, and you're saying, I need to be doing something. I want to be doing something. And so a lot of us maybe are going out doing the wrong things. <laughs> um, but, but you need, the Bible says that we are to bear fruit, producing an abundant growth, just like fruit, just like trees, you know, being fruitful in soil, being fruitful in the rain, being fruitful in what you produce. We have to be able to produce, you know, just like in the beginning where the Lord said to us, we have to be fruitful and multiply. He declared that in Genesis chapter one, verse number 22, where he said, where God blessed them. He blessed the people. He blessed Adam and Eve. And he said, be fruitful, multiply. And then he said, fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply up on the earth. He was saying to everything that he had created that I need you to be fruitful. I need you to multiply. So not only did he command a blessing upon us, but he also commanded that we would be fruitful on this earth, that we would multiply. And so I want to encourage everyone this morning that no matter what you found yourself doing, maybe you found yourself not being productive. Maybe you found yourself just sitting and saying, you know, because of this coronavirus environment, I'm not able to do anything. Maybe you've begun to make excuses as to why you can't do something with the fruit of your hands or, or why you can't do something with the fruit of your mouth or the lips and, or why you can't maybe go, go out to church. And maybe you've, you've, you've made excuses Come on, as to why you can't do a thing. Yes, Sister Marilyn, thank you for that. Your fruit should ripen daily. That means it has to be doing something. It has to be able to grow. Listen, the tree does not stop growing. As long as it's planted into the ground, as long as it's getting the proper nutrients, the proper sunlight, the proper amounts of water, it continues to grow every day. We should be the same way. We should be growing the Bible instructs us, listen, that we should be growing stronger and stronger and stronger every day. As a matter of fact, it says it in Psalms 105. Thank you for that, Sister Marilyn. Thank you for helping me to teach this this morning. It says, and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes. As a matter of fact, we should not have to surrender to the, to the things of the enemy. We should not have to surrender to anything that the enemy wants us to surrender to. Because even as I've spoken about, even on yesterday, sometimes we think it's people that cause us from being fruitful, people that causes us from being blessed. But just as we found in Numbers chapter 22, what the Lord blesses, no man can curse. No one is able to curse what God has blessed. Because even your enemies will begin, come on, to begin to bless you because of what God has done in your life. There is a commanded blessing on your life where the Lord is saying to you, be fruitful multiply, replenish, be strong, be of good courage. 
But we have to be people of, of faith. We have to be people who trust God. Because the Lord is saying, because of your faithfulness, because of your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are blessed. And your blessedness, the blessed place that you are in, is that thing that helps that relationship with God that you have that will cause what you have, will cause the fruit that you have, will process and grow where your spiritual man is fed. And when your, spirit, when your spiritual man is fed, yes, your fruit will begin to ripen, come on, on the vine. And as your fruit ripens on the vine, it will, be, it will fall off. There will be an abundance for you. It will, it will, listen, the leaf that you have, it depends on your root. You've got to have a strong and stable foundation. So your root have to, has to be able to, to take the water coming in, the life-giving moisture, come on, that only God can give. Because without that life-giving water, come on, your, your tree would die. The leaf would die. The leaves, come on, would not be able to get the water. It wouldn't happen. So you have to look at the faith that you have in God that causes the water of the spirit and the word of God to be converted to food. So your souls, come on, can have the understanding that you need so that the wisdom that God is giving to you would shine forth in your heart and you can speak that wisdom out. And you can speak it, come on, out in the way of doing what God has called for you to do. Speak it out in the way of loosing and binding. That, that, that gift, loosing and binding, that piece of ammunition in your arsenal that allows things to come to pass in your life. The Lord wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be strong. But most of all, he wants you to be blessed because he commanded a blessing over your life. Come on, the, the Lord made you. He created you in his image. Don't you all remember that? And you know his image. He's strong. He's powerful. He's producing. He's life-giving. Oh my God, he is fruitful. He is bearing fruit, effective fruit. And you are doing the same. And so listen, because you are in the kingdom of God, the Lord is saying to you, I'm calling you. I'm compelling you. I'm putting some pressure on you. I'm stretching you. I'm squeezing you to make sure that you are fruitful. And when you're not, come on, when you're not fruitful, how do you feel? I want to know just how do you feel when you're not fruitful, when you're sitting home, listen, doing, listen, not doing what you know the Lord has called for you to do. You're thinking, am I failing myself? Am I failing God? Come on, you're thinking, what, what am I doing when I'm not being fruitful, when I'm not sitting and doing what God has called for me to do? You're sitting and you're thinking about all the things that are going on in your life, all the things that perhaps are going wrong in your life. Maybe the things that you've done wrong with your children. Maybe the things that you've done wrong with your marriage. Maybe the things that you've done wrong with your family. Maybe things that you've done wrong, perhaps with your job. Even the church, when you become discontented about not being fruitful, But I'm telling you, this discontentment that you have, this can be caused by not bearing the fruit that God has caused you to release in the atmosphere, in the earth realm. God desires for you to release the fruit. He desires, listen, he's given it to you. He's commanded you to be blessed. He's commanded you to be fruitful and multiply. So he needs for you to release this thing. You are stronger. I just read it. You are stronger than the enemy. You are stronger than your adversaries. You are stronger than anybody who tries to come against you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there's no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You are stronger than that. But you got to be healthy. You got to be able to produce much fruit. You know the scripture that is in Psalm chapter 1. Chapter 1. It says, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor um, stand in the way of sinners, sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his does he meditate day and night. And then one number three says, well, he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, bears fruit in his season, and everything, bears fruit in his season, and everything he does shall prosper. So there is prosperity for those who are fruitful. This morning, I want to tell you, the prosperity is yours today. But the promises that God has in that verse, they're conditional to you. You got to live a life, 
come on, that is separated from those that are sinful, those that are scornful, those, come on, that will not um, give the counsel that the Lord is talking about. And when you feed on the word of God, when you believe God, when you trust God, when you commit your ways unto the Lord, then you can expect good things. You can expect prosperity to follow. You can expect blessings to follow when you do the things that God has asked for you to do. The Lord is saying, listen, I'm placing you by the river. Why is he placing you by the river? He's placing you by a place where there's life-giving resources. You got to be, listen, wherever you're positioned right now, you may not be listening because it's difficult. It's difficult for us to get to our places of worship. Maybe it is and maybe it isn't. Maybe your church is open. Maybe your place of worship has opened. But maybe you're making an excuse or using it as an excuse that we can't go and we can't be by one another. But let me just share this one thing with you. Unless you're staying in your house 24 hours a day, you're putting on a mask and you're going somewhere. You're going to the store or you're going to the mall or you're doing something. What are you doing for God in this hour? Don't you know that God will protect you through this thing? Because I know your churches are just disinfecting. I know that there are social distancing. I know many of them have masks for you to wear if you don't bring your own, just like we do at Kingdom Life. So don't use this as an, ex as an excuse as to why you can't go to your houses of God. But many of them as well are also um, uh, streaming online. And some of us aren't even listening online. But the Lord is saying, I'm placing you by the river. So where are you at? Where are you? I hear the Lord saying, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Where the Lord wants to prosper you. You got to be in the place where the Lord actually can give you nourishment. And he can give you the life-giving resources. That you can actually get the water that you need in order to grow. In order, my God, in order to be strong. Because you as a believer, listen, when you live close to God, I want to tell you this morning, you will never be dry. You will never be wilted. You will never be dull. Come on, when you live close to God, come on, you will always be lively. You will always be productive. I'm talking about the blessings of a fruitful believer. Come on, because those who go away, those who away from the Lord, those, come on, you don't know the joy of being where the Lord is. And when you drift, when you shift away, come on, there are many right now who have been in the body of Christ who are spiritually wilted. Their leaves are wilted. They're spiritually wilted. My God. And as a result, come on, they're spiritually dead looking and walking around like zombies and they're wondering what's going on. You may be wondering what's going on, but they understand. They have come from the place where the Lord is. They've come from the place of life-giving resource. And the Lord is saying, I need you to be in a position where I can water you. Because there are always places of drought in our life. There are always places, always seasons, come on, of drought in our life. And it seems like the believer is not planted or planted or positioned in a place where God can get to them, where God can help them. Come on, but you as a believer, you as one who is fruitful, the successful believer, the fruitful believer, the one who is effective, the one, my God, who has the abundance, who has their fruit falling off of them because of the overflow, they are connected to the source. They are connected to the life-giving source. They are connected so that the Lord can give them the strength as in the word where it says that you then can be stronger than your enemies. They are connected. Talking about the tree, you are the tree. So that a tree, I'm talking about, he didn't say a bush. He didn't say, listen, he said a tree because a tree does what? A tree shows that you can stand tall. You can stand tall above those that are around you. The life of a successful believer helps you to stand tall over those that are around you. I'm talking about the blessings of being fruitful. The blessings of being fruitful helps you to know that others will see you. Because you are standing tall, not like a little shrub. <laughs> he didn't say you'll be like a shrub planted by the rivers of water. But he said you will be like a tree. That men will know that you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Men will know that you have a walk with the Lord. That men will know. Why, will, why do men need to know? Not that we can brag and we can boast about our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But that men and women can know who God is in your life when they see the blessings on you. When your enemies see the blessings on you, 
They will know how God came to your rescue, how he pulled you out, how he lifted you up. Come on. And how he planted you to in a place of permanence. Listen, sometimes, listen, as, as, as I tell you about this story about I had some uh, bushes, some, some, some shrubs in my backyard. And they couldn't handle what happened last winter. The winter last winter was not good to some shrubs that were in my backyard. I had to pull them up. I had to pl actually pull them up. And we pulled them up. They, they didn't make it. But unlike those shrubs, a tree, you just can't pull a tree up. A tree has deep roots. The Lord says, I'm planting you deep. I'm, I'm sinking you down deep. He says, I'm, a matter of fact, I'm hiding you, my God, that no one can pluck you up. He said, he said nobody can pluck you up. Because what I bless, no man can curse. He said, I can't, I can't pluck you up. He said, because, because of my word, because you're studying, you're reading, you're praying. I can't get you up. He says, he says I, I, you can't be transplanted. The Lord is planting you deep, sinking you down deep like a tree that bears fruit, the Bible says, in its season. And the Lord, when he plants you, not when you plant yourself, but when he plants you, you will always be planted in good ground, in good soil, so you can receive the nutrient that God has for us. But if you are planted, the Lord says, listen, the blessing of being fruitful is that it's your responsibility to draw from the resources of God, that the resources that God has provided to you, you got to go get prayer. You have to read your word. You got to daily meditate on the word day and night. The Bible is saying, he says, and then you will bring forth fruit. Because a, a believer, come on, that's planted by the river, you will be a blessing to everybody around you. So that when I see the tree, when, listen, when you see a fruit tree, aren't you just tempted to pick off of it? Aren't you tempted because you see apple trees or, or whatever you see on that fruit tree, you're tempted to pick off of it. You see a grapevine, you're tempted to pick off of it. It's beneficial for everybody that is around it. You just never know who's feeding off of you. You never know who's picking off of you. You never, because of the abundance that God is placing you because you're so fruitful, you never know who is benefiting from the blessings that God has placed on you. Isn't that a good thing? The Lord said in his season, in his season, there are seasons that the Lord has placed us in. There are seasons of rest, there are seasons of growth, but I'm, this morning I'm telling you people of God, your season of rest is over. The Lord is saying, listen, it is your season of growth. It's time out for excuses. It is your season of growth. It is your season to be fruitful. It is your season, my God, that the Lord is, listen, he's treating you now like an evergreen. You're unaffected by the winter, unaffected by the weather. You're unaffected by people. You're unaffected by negative talk. You're unaffected by things that might try to come to harm you. You're consistent. And it's time for us to show that consistency, not just among our lives, but so that others might be able to benefit from our consistency. And the word of the Lord says that whatever you do, whatever you do shall prosper. I'm talking about the believer who was fruitful. God will bless you. He'll bless you in your family life. He'll bless, bless you in your business life. He will bless you in your church home. He'll bless you from a mental standpoint. He'll bless you from a physical standpoint. He will bless you, come on, from a spiritual standpoint. He will bless you. Why? Because the blessing is on you. He commanded the blessing on you in Deuteronomy. In Genesis, he commanded the blessing on you when he told you to be fruitful and multiply. You are blessed. Now, I understand that there are things that happen in your life. Not to say that there will not be some storms that come up. But even you can speak to those storms. You're not supposed to be sick. You're not supposed to be in poverty. You're not supposed to be downtrodden. You're not supposed to have low self-esteem. He says, I will place you high above all of those things. You have the characteristics of one. Because the Lord said it. You have the characteristics of one who was fruitful. The one, my God who will multiply, 
the characteristics of one who has the joy of the Lord, my God. And if you seem lacking in those areas, it is not the Lord. You got to position yourself to receive the nourishment of God, to receive the nutrients of God. Because it is the will of God, hear me people of God, that you be fruitful and that you multiply. And the Bible says, listen, in 1 John 5 and 14, that this is the confidence that we have, that if we ask anything according to the will of God, that the Lord will hear us. And when we hear, when he hears us, we have the petitions that we have set before him. So we know that it is the will of God that we be fruitful and multiply. Why is that? Because the Bible said he's commanded a blessing upon us and that he spoke it into existence, that we be fruitful and multiply because he said it to him. He said in Genesis chapter one, verse number 28. And then he also said in John 5, 15 and eight, where he said, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. God has designed all of us so that everything will bear fruit after its own kind. You can speak it. You can ask God, God, since I know it's your will, Lord, I'm asking that you allow me, God, to come out of this place of complacency and come into a place, God, where I, God, will bear much fruit because I understand there is blessings, God, in me bearing fruit. God, help me to come out of this place of low self-esteem. Help me to come out of this place, Lord God, of despondency. Help me, Lord God, to come out of this place of illness. God, help me to come out of this place, Lord God, where I, God, don't care. Help me to come out of this place, Lord God, and bring me into a place, Lord, where I bear much fruit. Because even in it where it says in Genesis chapter 1, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit and the tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And the Bible says it is so. Because in the beginning, God created man, my God, in his image and his likeness. And then God said, let us make man in our image according to his likeness. The Lord, come on, his bringing men many sons and daughters to glory who will bear his image. And in his image, my God, the Lord, my God is fruitful. He is multiplying here on the earth. God is bringing many sons to glory. It says that in Hebrews chapter two and verse number 10, we've got to know that the Bible says that the Lord commanded a blessing on us. And he is saying to all of us, we will be blessed to be fruitful. That is the will of God for your life. Life. So whatever you are doing right now, you got to know and you got to recognize that the Lord wants you to be fruitful. The Lord wants you, my God, to bear fruit. He wants you to be multiplied even in yourself in the earth. Not only does God want us to bear fruit, but he also wants us to bear fruit that will remain. He, listen, it is not the temporary thing that we're talking about. And oftentimes we think about it from a temporary standpoint. But the Lord, just like that evergreen, he wants some permanence in your life. He wants you to understand that things are permanent in your life. We can't be going wishy-washy back and forth. He wants there to be fruit that will remain. Spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit that remains. Listen, are godly sons and daughters who raise and bear uh, and release other spiritual sons and daughters. Listen, we got to bear fruit that remains. That's a that's the great commission that the Lord gave to us. Bear fruit that remains. What is the legacy that you're leaving? What is the legacy? We talked about the, the tree being planted, roots far down into the earth. The, the establishment of the spiritual life, the foundation for a fruitful life. It begins with your relationship with God. It begins with your relationship with God. The Bible says in John 5 and 19, most assuredly I say to you that the Son himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in that like manner. We're talking about bearing fruit that remains. Fruit that remains. Not fruit that spoils and gets rotten, but fruit that remains. We're talking about a, a an abiding relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the power that flows through you, from you to him, from him to you. That's that an intimate relationship is what I'm talking about. Intimacy is what I'm talking about. Bearing fruit that remains the intimacy, being the vine that is connected to Jesus Christ, sowing 
preaching, teaching the word of God, proclaiming that word of God, being disciplined in the things of God, allowing the Lord, listen, to prune you. I'm talking about pruning that tree, cutting away things that are not productive for you so that you can be productive, cutting away unproductive relationships, cutting away unproductive activities, cutting away unproductive things from your lives so that the energy of God can come through, through to fruitfulness in your life. So that the Lord then can do what? He can activate the blessings in your life. Come on, somebody needs to say, activate, activate, Lord, the bless blessings in my life. So that I know that the destiny that I have is a destiny of spiritual empowerment. It's a destiny, God, that I have in the life of myself, in the lives of those that I'm speaking into. So that I can equip every person. I can equip every son. I can equip every daughter. So that they come to the knowledge of who Jesus is. I can equip them with tools. I can equip them with skills. I can equip them with weapons that are necessary to come against the things of the enemy. And then we can release into them. My God, we can release maturity. We can release into freedom. We can re in release into them responsibility. My God, that they will be able to fulfill their destiny in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we release that into them, they are able to go forth, spring forth, and bear fruit. My God, that their fruit will remain. We have to be able, I got to get out of here. We got to be able to be reproducing people of God. The Bible says, my God, that you are blessed to bear fruit. There is a blessing in bearing fruit so that we will begin to reactivate, activate and reactivate so that we can release in somebody else the more of God, the more of God. So that we can come against all the things that the enemy has tried to do in our life. Come against burdens and come against rejection and come against rebelliousness. Come against jealousy. Come against envy. Come against strife. Come against those things that have held us down for so long. Come, come against negativity. Come against spirit. Oh my God. Critical attitudes. Come against those things. Come against disease. Come against those things. My God. Come against my God where the devourer has tried to uh, come and, and, and eat up our fruit. Rebuke him now in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, come against, uh, my God, spiritual miscarriage. Come against those things. Well, because of our fruitfulness, we can believe God for growth. We can believe God for increase. We can believe God. My God, we can pursue. I was thinking about this morning as I was looking in my closet. You got, we got to make room for growth. We got to make room for God to be able to pour into our lives. We got to make room for the abundance. How do we make room? How do I make room? I make room by getting rid of the old stuff, getting rid of things. Come on, getting rid of the old things, moving things out of the way, clearing my closet, clearing the clutter. How do we make spiritual room? How do we make room for spiritual growth? We make room for spiritual growth by obeying the Lord. Listen, not listening to people. Come on, listening to sinful people. We make room, my God, by obeying the voice of God. We make room for God, make room for spiritual growth by proclaiming the voice of God. We make room, my God, by getting rid of the clutter in our mind, Christ bringing down every stronghold. We make room, my God, by, uh, by uh, getting rid of the enemy that's in our mind, by list, not listening to him, but listening, up, listening to God. We make room by activating the faith that God is giving to us. We make room by reactivating the men and the women of God that we spoken into. We make room, my God, by focusing on the ministry that God has given to us. We make room, my God, by putting together the plans and the strategy. And then, my God, listen to me here. We make room by speaking victory and not defeat. Oh, my God, I thank you, Jesus, for the blessings that we have in fruitfulness recognizing, God, that we don't have to fight every single battle every time at one time. But we fight and we focus on one thing at a time, Lord, recognizing that there is a strategy to our spiritual growth. My God, I want to end with this verse in Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. It says, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So as to walk in all manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Lord, I thank you this morning. 
I thank you, Lord God, that there is a blessing in our being fruitful. There is a blessing, Lord God. Lord, in our opening ourselves up to you, most of all, Lord God, there is a blessing, Lord God, in us being stable and established in the things of you. Lord, that we will be like a tree, Lord God, that is planted, Lord God, positioned, Lord, by the resources that you've given to us. And Lord God, we will reach for those resources. We will reach, God, for the power, for the anointing, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that as we are being filled with the knowledge, God, of your will, filled, Lord God, with all spiritual understanding, we recognize, Lord, that we can't be filled with you if we are filled, Lord, with junk and with mess, Lord God. We are filled with toxic things. We are filled with negativity, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that we've got to get rid of, God. We've got to remove, God, the clutter that has been in our lives, God, for so long. We have to understand, Lord God, that we a blessing has been commanded over our lives. And because a blessing, God, has been commanded over our lives, Lord God, we will receive that blessing. We come against, Lord God, everything that has tried to come against us, Lord God. And we receive everything, Lord, that you have given to us. We receive, Lord God, good health. We receive, Lord God, good mental stability, Lord God. We receive, Lord God, prosperity, God. We receive, Lord, joy in the Lord. Matter of fact, Lord God, we receive your peace, oh God, that surpasses all understanding. We receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, because you have commanded that blessing unto us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Even, my God, as Balak, my God, in Numbers chapter 22, tried to put a curse on the children of Israel. And Balaam said to him, my God, what the Lord has blessed, I cannot curse. We thank you, Lord God, that the blessing that you have placed on the people of God shall not be cursed. It is a blessing, Lord God, that goes into perpetuity, Lord God. And because of that, God, we decree and we declare right now that we are blessed. And because we are blessed, oh God, we shall be fruitful. We shall multiply, Lord God. We shall activate, my God, that fruitfulness, my God, that men and women might see, God, how fruitful we are. They shall see, God, our trees standing tall. They shall see the abundance, O Lord God. And we thank you, O Lord God, that the abundance that we have shall not just be those that are coming along, those that are looking on, Lord God, those shall be able to reap the benefits, Lord God, of our abundance. And we thank you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I pray for those, my Lord God, that have not heard this word of abundance, that have not heard this word of the commanded blessing, and have not heard this word Lord, of the release, my God, and the activation, Lord God, of fruitfulness, O oh God. Pray, Lord God, you continue to bless them, touch them, O oh God, with wisdom and understanding, O oh Lord God, that they, God, may bear fruit in every good work. We thank you, O oh Lord God, that you will increase in us, Lord God, the knowledge of you, that we will come to know, God, how powerful and mighty you are. Lord, I pray right now for those that are sick among us, Lord God. I pray, God, for the friends, oh God, that are, my God, that are in the hospital. I pray for the one, my God, that have just had the stroke. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are able to open those blood vessels, oh Lord God, that the blood, my God, will flow freely, my God, to his brain. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that there is nothing that is too hard for you. Matter of fact, the Bible says, Lord God, that your arms are not reach down and touch every infirmity, my God. And the Bible says, even my God. That when there is someone that is sick among us, you call for the elders of the church, my God, because, my God, the fervent prayers of the righteous do avail much. And so even as I ask for those who are on this line to pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for that one who have just experienced a stroke, that the God will be able to turn that situation around and allow, my God, whatever, my God, to allow that situation to work out for his good in the Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for those that are watching all over the land and country. For those that are in the Bahamas, for those that are in Puerto Rico, for those that are watching in Texas, for those that are in Nashville, Tennessee. For wherever you are, wherever you are watching, I want you to understand that there's a commanded blessing that is over your life. And the Lord, my God, decrees and declares that for you, that the blessing is upon you, that you shall be fruitful and you shall multiply. That blessing is for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. People of God, thank you so much for staying with me this morning for staying with me, for understanding that there is a blessing over your life. Not only is there a blessing over your life, but the, all those that are connected to you, come on, they've got, they've got a friend because of the abundance that is on your life, that abundance, come on, is coming off of you, right? And I speak it in the atmosphere, the abundance that is coming off of you because now of your understanding of where God has you, where you're positioned to be, that abundance that is flowing off of you, it shall flow onto those that are divinely connected to you. But listen, there's a pruning that needs to take place. Because there are some that are connected to you that don't need to be connected. Allow God to prune you so that you will be able to grow and flourish and be strong. 
My God, I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day and you go in peace.